Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to be looking at the best weapons from level 3 traders. Now this is an interesting one because at this stage you have the flea market and so often this becomes which ammos you can buy at this point rather than specifically which guns. Obviously these two things go hand in hand so we're going to start with the lowest level of level 3 traders which is Jaeger at level 22 to go and see what he has in store for us. As you can see, there's not a great deal here. There's really only two actual proper weapons. The first one is the SV-98OV, which is pretty good because this is basically an upgraded version of the original SV-98, except it has a lot more ergonomics of 57, which is nice. We can also see it weighs just under four kilos. And if we go to the flea market, we can see that the original version had 31 ergo and 5.2 kilograms instead. So it's a lot heavier and a lot more cumbersome in terms of ergo. So basically what you can do is put a scope and a suppressor on this one, and it should handle a little bit better than the default version. At this stage in your progression, you're probably quite limited again in terms of ammunition as usual. The only ones that you can really buy from the traders I think is up to T46 as we will see here. And that 389 rubles isn't that bad. But the one thing that you have to remember about T46 is that it is a tracer. So when you fire this, you will be spotted sometimes because people will see where the bullets are coming from. The unfortunate alternative to this is that if you don't buy from traders, the stuff gets very expensive very quickly. LPS has nearly the same performance as T46. And unfortunately, if you want to upgrade to the next one, which is PS, which is sellable on the flea, this is nearly 5,000 rubles per bullet, which is pretty insane. So one strategy is you could top load either PS or LPS over some T46 underneath if you want to save some money. But just be aware with T46 being a tracer, you might get spotted sometimes. The other gun is the Saiga 12 Nerf gun. This one is 10 Sprats, 10 Aquamaris, and hidden down here is 10 Squashes as well. This one actually being the most expensive part. Altogether, this stuff costs about 500,000 rubles and you can sell back the Saiga so you can actually get the Flare off here relatively easily. I went and bought one of these so that I could show you that it sells for 96,000 rubles back to Mechanic, obviously without the Flare on it. But Effect, you're getting this for about 400k which may or may not be worth it to you there are some nice other parts on it to be fair the canted grip this one's not very easy to get and also the power mag 20 round magazine which is a pretty decent one too these normally cost about 40k on the flea so you could keep some of these parts as well and make it sort of technically cost less if you are going to use some of them yourself now that we've looked at Jaeger's weapons, we're going to have a look at some of the ammunition that he holds. And here is where you find the 8.5 Magnum Buckshot cartridge. This one has been moved up to Jaeger 3, probably because of worries about the armor system and the fact that this does 50 damage per pellet. This makes it extremely powerful and people who like Magnum Buckshot really do love it and do very well with it. There's one thing to remember about this is that because it does 50 damage per pellet, you can actually one shot people with any pellet all the way out to 100 meters, which is not the case for basically any Buckshot round in the game. On the other end of the spectrum, you also get access to 50 BMG slug. This is like the poor man's equivalent of AP20, but AP20 is only craftable now in the Workbench 3, as we will see later. So whilst this doesn't have the same pen, it's better than all of the other slugs barring AP20. The other one that is kind of interesting is BCP FMJ on Jaeger 3. This is the precursor to M80, and while it doesn't do as good pen, it is amazing on damage as well. So this can be a solid choice in some of the early 7.62x51 guns. And again, in context of the new armor system, the penetration in the mid 30s on this means that unless you're hitting a hard plate specifically you probably will pen through and kill them in two shots just because we're so much less protected now than we used to be all right so moving on to peacekeeper 3 at level 23 let's see what weapons he has in store for us now the unfortunate thing about Peacekeeper is that most of his guns are just found cheaper on the flea market, so his actual selection of weapons is not really very useful. This AK-74N is not bad for 6 GP coins if you don't have the parts, so you can get an RK-3 grip nice and cheap, this meta holographic sight and a 60 rounder which isn't bad at all, but a lot of the others are just not worth buying, for example the MP7 and the MDR. The MDR in particular, look at this, $925 which equates to something around 120 k these are now 50k on the fleet, so it's basically half the price and there's really not much point buying a lot of these guns from him. The first one that I think that is valuable potentially is the Org A3. At nearly $600, this is something like 85k, so this is about the same price as you get on the fleet. But the powerful thing about the Org on Peacekeeper 3 is some of the mods that you get access to. While you can take off this scope and you already have the Org A3 upper, you can also buy the Org A3 upper and attach it to the A1 as well. And once you've done so, at Peacekeeper 3 you get two more attachments, the low mount and the high mount, depending on exactly which optic you want to put on. I've been a real fan of this low mount so far this wipe. You could put whatever sight you want on top of this, so either some low powered optic or a little red dot or something, and then combine this with a laser. This is really, really good. It has very low vertical recoil. I've done a whole another video about 556 where I basically said that for mid tier builds, I think the AUG is probably one of the best guns and you get access to all of the parts of Peacekeeper 3. The longer versions of the G36, I wouldn't bother with, just use the C from Peacekeeper 2. And then we get to a couple of other interesting weapons down here. The SR25 is cool because you can only buy it from the traders. This one isn't accessible on the flea anymore after it got banned a couple of wipes ago. So if you do want a decent 762x51 weapon, the SR25 is the way to go and you can buy this from him. 
This isn't the cheapest way to do it, but the SR is kind of like a middle ground. It's got decent recoil, it's got decent weight, it's got decent ergo, and it mods out very flexibly depending on what you want to do. The RSAS is also incredibly good. This one has less recoil than the SR25, although in the recent recoil model, I don't know whether that really matters so much anymore. And the barter for the dog tags is very good. Most people end up doing this one to get their first RSAS for gunsmith, and so, you know, keep your bear dog tags above level 15 if you can. But later on in the wipe, if you want to use the RSAS, this is also a steal when you look at how much a level 15 dog tag actually costs if you trade it into therapist directly. You can pretty much use any dog tags between level 15 and level 25, I believe, and it's still better value to get the RSAS from Peacekeeper 3 using this barter than it is to buy in cash. Next, we have the M1A. I think for a stock version of this gun, this is quite expensive. There's a better version available on Mechanic 3 that I think we should skew towards, and that's on a barter as well, so it ends up costing about the same. So I think this one's sort of pointless. The M700 is a lot of people's favorite bolt action. This one is very, very flexible, so you can make very high ergo builds for snappy ADS, or you can make very low weight builds for incredibly long arm stamina. So whatever you want to do with it, you can pretty much make it with the M700. This one is often sold out and is a very popular choice. The G28 is just way too much right now. This keycard costs approximately a million rubles, which is kind of insane. So yeah, let's not go for that one right at this moment, but keep it in mind because these keycards are used for a quest, and so the price of them comes down a lot later on. The advantage with the G28 is that it comes with a 1x8 Schmitten Bender by default and these things are relatively expensive about 100k and they'll probably go up as the wipe goes on. Now to me the weapon selection is all well and good but Peacekeeper 3's value is really in the ammunition. This is extremely good and it sort of sets up a lot of our mid wipe for many reasons. The first one being you can now buy M855 from Peacekeeper directly. M855 was historically seen as a purely introductory round into the 556 caliber but now because again of the armor system and the fact that class 3 soft armor is the best that you can get all of these bullets with approximately 30 penetration deal with that completely fine. I want to Say this is necessarily the best bullet to use but it's good to stack in magazines because you can buy it in plentiful supply from peacekeeper once you get here then we have ap6.3 this is actually very similar in stats to m855 but we have to remember the weapons that ap6.3 goes in nine mil guns have historically been quite underpowered in tarkov but with the new armor system and having a 30 pen bullet that you can fire at extreme rpms or with extreme precision this is now quite decent there's a couple of weapons that make this quite good, the MP5 SD or the MPX Suppressed, both have very very minimal recoil, and you also have other guns like the MP9 and the Vector which have super high RPMs. This is basically what you want, because these won't go through a class 4 plate, but if you shoot them anywhere around the side, in the head, in the neck, around the thorax, then you probably will kill them, which is quite a big change in the meta. I like AP6.3 and it's working well. L191 is also accessible, this is for the P90, it's actually slightly better than AP6.3 technically on penetration, but it's over that 30 pen threshold so no soft armor is safe. The fact that you can buy this from Peacekeeper as well makes the P90 extremely good, and with the 900 RPM fire rate and a 50 round magazine by default, I like the P90 a lot with this bullet. Likewise, SB193. This is one that people aren't really using at the moment because this used to be the second best in the caliber just behind SS190. But unfortunately, it got nerfed from around 35 pen down to 27 now, so last wipe, a lot of people thought that it was completely useless. Again, introducing the new armor system, 27 pen is actually quite good now, and you get minus 15 recoil on the P90, which is already pretty much a laser beam. I might give this one another try because I'm not sure if it's actually worth taking L191 over SB193, to be perfectly honest with you. It does slightly more damage too, which can only be a good thing. Now, 45 ACP Hydroshock is a weird one. This one goes into the 45 Vector and also into the UMP. With 100 damage and 13 pen, it's not perfectly suited for going through soft armor, even class 2. But the thing that we have to remember about this is the pen is good enough to achieve quite a lot of blunt damage, and because it has 100 base damage against a packer, you should expect it to hit for about 30, even if it doesn't go through. I really think that people are misunderstanding the way that blunt damage works because we've never really had this kind of bullet be shot at class 2 armors as frequently as we are getting in the game at the moment because a lot of people are wearing these around their plates and I've seen many posts with players getting surprised. I'm doing some work at the moment on blunt damage to maybe do a bit of an explainer about why this is becoming an increasingly important mechanic in Tarkov because I think people are misunderstanding just how vulnerable you are to it. Do I think that this is a no-brainer cartridge to use? I'm not really sure, I don't think so, but from my perspective we've seen how vulnerable PMCs are, and if you can slide one of these underneath somebody's left arm hitbox while they're ADS'd at you and it hits the chest without going through any armour, they will literally die in one shot. If you only hit class 2 soft armour, you will also kill them in 3 shots, and obviously you always have the face hitbox too, so I don't know, I think that this one is a little bit of an underdog, and I think that we need to watch out for rounds like this. 
The final one is a bit of an interesting one. This is SIG FMJ, and this is for the spear. This is the only weapon that takes this particular cartridge. Now, my opinion on it, basically because you can't buy the spear at this level, you can't buy the muzzle attachment, and the magazines are difficult to purchase, SIG FMJ acts very much like BCP FMJ that we saw on Jaeger, and it just isn't worth putting in the SIG spear, because that weapon tends to cost about 240,000 to 300,000 rubles on the flea market. You're much better off using BCP from Jaeger and buying something like the SR25. Once you reach Peacekeeper 4, the upgraded version of the SIG ammo, the SIG hybrid, is definitely very good and seems like some kind of love child between 7.62 BP and the 7.62 NATO cartridges in terms of damage, which is extremely scary. Not to mention it can fire that at 800 RPM, but this is quite a high level weapon and I think we should just shelve this one for the moment. So moving on to level 26, we are getting to Prapor. Now Prapor on his particular loader, he has the dreaded SVT, which has really fallen off this wipe. A lot of people are not using it anymore because it was extremely good in the previous wipe, but now it's very hard to buy the ammo for it and semi-auto is nowhere near as good as full auto is these days. At 62k, it's still usable. You can use it if you like. I just don't see that many people doing it anymore. Now I'm not really a big pistols guy and I haven't touched on many, but the RSH revolver is at least worth a mention. These AA batteries don't really cost that much. It's about sort of 10 to 20k, just sort of depending on the time and then these military cables are about 30k. You can buy this thing for somewhere around 80 to 100,000 rubles. Like, it is a lot. Remember, this thing can fire PS12B, which basically one-shots everybody these days. It's definitely a meme, but it could be quite a funny one. The AKMN is basically fairly priced. There's lots of people using this for Punisher, so there's always demand for this weapon. So it pretty much goes for where it does on the flea market. Then goes for the AKMSN and probably the 103 as well, although this one tends to trade a little bit cheaper on the flea market because of its lack of muzzle attachments. He also has a lot more 545 guns as well. The AK-74M, the 104, the 105, these ones I just don't think it's worth bothering with. These typically go for cheaper on the fleet and the 74U counterparts are currently outperforming them because of higher ergonomics. The AK-12 you can buy on the fleet cheaper as well but this is actually not a bad gun these days because the RPM is slightly higher and the RPK I'm just not really sure is really worth using for the same reasons as these ones. After these, we get onto the RPD, which is a new gun this wipe. There are two versions that you can buy, one on Prapor and one on Mechanic. And this standard RPD doesn't come with any kind of optic mounting system, which is slightly unfortunate. It's still an extremely fun weapon, but we'll take a look a little more closely when we go over to Mechanic. The SR2M, I think, has taken a huge nerf just because of the way that the ammo is. This used to be a lot better than it was. A lot of the ammo has had its pen reduced, and the most powerful rounds in this caliber have also had their damage reduced as well. So this one's a lot more of a pea shooter. And because you can't get extended mags with, I actually think that 9mm and the P90 both outperform this thing at the moment. This VSS barter is too expensive, so you just get it on the flea market. Now the KS23, this does cost a reasonable amount of money to get all of these things together. Probably something around 80 to 100,000 rubles, but you can't get the KS23 anywhere else. This still only comes with four different types of ammunition, Shrap 10, Shrap 25, Barricade, Slugs, and the Flashbang Round. And some of these we'll see in a second that you can buy from Prepol 3. Now the one that I was really intrigued about was the Barricade Slug, because this looks very much like AP20 Slugs. And when I went to test it, I unfortunately found out that there is some weird thing going on with the KS23, at least in the offline hideout. I haven't tested it live in Raid, but there appears to be a dramatic pull up and to the left for some reason. And so I really struggled when I went into offline mode first with the scavs and had to test it afterwards to discover this, because it's really strange and if you can adjust for that then maybe it's okay because the barricade slug does insane damage and has just shy of 40 pen but I think with this weird aiming I just don't think it's really worth getting at the moment. The SVD, this is always going to be solid. Obviously, it's very expensive. Lots of people have to use it for Punisher. It's got a fairly high price at Prapor, but this hits like an absolute truck. Given that you're slightly closer, you may want to get away with T46 on this. But you can get lots of 762x54R ammo in Raid as well, so there are plenty of ways to get SMB and other good bullets like that. And he has the SV98, which you can use if you want a basic one and you don't want to use Jaegers. So, in terms of ammunition, this opens up quite a lot of the AK platform and that kind of thing. So, you start out with PS that you can now purchase from Prepple 3, which is extremely high, but this wipe we've seen all the ammos pushed out a lot. And as we know, with 35 pen, this is an extremely good bullet. You can also buy 7.62 T45, which acts pretty much the same as PS, but is a tracer instead. And interestingly, you can buy 7.62 by 39 US as well. Now, I actually think that this one might be a hidden contender. Because the penetration is also around 30, it's actually pretty decent and is much more usable than it has been before. But although the recoil re is in, a lot of the weapons that are chambered in 762 by 39 do have a lot more recoil than their counterparts in other calibers. With minus 30 recoil, 762 by 39 US gets rid of a lot of this, and I was using this in the RPD to great effect earlier in the stream, and it's certainly one to consider if you want to make those 762 AKs feel a little bit more controllable. We also have T46, as we said, we could buy this from Prapor and act very similarly to LPS if we don't want to spend 1,000 rubles per bullet on the flea market. And then for the KS23, we get the barricade slug itself, as I was just talking about a moment ago, as well as the shrapnel. 25. Interestingly, Shrap 10, which I would argue is the better cartridge, is actually on Prepple 2, so you could choose between Shrap 25 or Shrap 10. 
That turn is extremely scary these days because it does more than 85 damage per pellet, but with bullet drop off you probably won't be one shotting people with a single pellet outside of about 10 meters, although at those ranges the KS is still very very scary. Now this final one here, 9x21-7U4, this is for the SR2M and as I said before this is one of the reasons why I just don't think that the SR2M is really performing anymore. This is a brand new bullet and has 47 damage and 27 pens, so it's about the same as AP6.3 and the P90 bullets, although in fact very slightly worse on both damage and penetration, and given the downsides on the magazine capacity I just don't think that this is very good. The next up we're going to go and have a look at Skier and he has an underwhelming selection of items. The MCX is cheaper on the flea market, the RFB is better off doing the barter from Skier 2 or just buying it from the flea market directly as well and the Vector is cheaper on the flea too. The DVR barter is relatively expensive plus it's also the unsuppressed version and you could buy the T5000 if you want from here because this is at least the same price as it is on the flea. Now alongside his underwhelming set of weapons here he also has an underwhelming set of ammo. The only thing that he has here is 300 blackout BCP FMJ. This does 60 damage and has 30 pen so it's basically equivalent to M855 for 5.56 with a little more damage on it so if you are using the MCX then I guess this is okay but to me it's very entry level for tier 3 traders and I don't really think many people are going to be using it. So we're going to have to skip all the way up to level 30 and go up to mechanic and see what he has in store for us. Nowadays he has a relatively cheap M4 that gets sold out quite frequently as well as the old LVOA build for the M4. This one is honestly not bad, GP coins are still pretty cheap, under 30k these days usually. So this thing is done for about 100,000 rubles in total and you do get some really good parts with it. Obviously it matters a lot less now, it starts with a vertical recoil of 71 and you can't get it down that low by adding a few bits and pieces but it does come with a good lower on recoil and relatively high ergonomics because of the handguard. So if you like the M4 then you might want to use this one as a starting point once you get to Mechanic 3. He also sells an AK N for slightly less than Prapple, as well as a 74M, a 101, and this amazing barter. Now, Marlboros don't really have much use anymore, and these things are extremely cheap on the fleet. You can basically do this every single refresh if you want to. These four Marlboros are probably going to cost you about 10k, and the military cable will cost you about 30, meaning that this Zenico AK74M costs a grand total of about 40,000 rubles, which is pretty insane considering that the RK3 goes for more than that on its own on the fleet. This is a really good base to use, or just strip the parts. It's up to you. The 102, similar to the 101, I don't know why it's so much more expensive because the 102 is pretty much strictly worse. It has basically the same ergonomics. It's only three better than the AK-101, but it has worse recoil and worse fire rates. Now, fire rate, I think, is really important this wipe because recoil is much more manageable. And so that's the tipping point for me with the AK-101, although you can actually even buy these more cheaply on the fleet because they've really gone out of fashion. This was one of my favorite weapons in the past five patches or something, but these days there's just not really any point in using it because when it starts with 76 recoil and you can get a weapon like the Orc with 46 recoil instead, you just think to yourself, why? Especially with the small magazine capacity. Next up is a wild one, the SA58 for 8 weapon parts. These go for about 20 to 30k, it just kind of depends. So you could pick one of these up for about 160 to 200,000 rubles, but this is very, very powerful. The SA58 has been one of those weapons that has had a huge buff, but not that many people are using it yet, partly because of ammo restrictions. But a 50 round drums worth of BCP FMJ is extremely terrifying in this gun because it has a 700 RPM fire rate, and this build comes importantly with the Extreme Duty Dust Cover, which is incidentally on Mechanic 3, so you can use that but the 50 rounder does not. This makes it a bit of a powerhouse and I think we might be seeing some return to the SA58 especially for small close quarters fights. The bigger, longer, more expensive version I don't think is really worth it. As you can see this is 87 recoil and this is 93 so I would go for the one with extra ergonomics because ergo is really being favoured this wipe just because recoil doesn't matter as much. Now the next one that I like is the Mark 17. This is the Scar H and in a similar vein to the SR25 you can't get this any other way. You have to get it from the traders in some fashion and Mechanic 3 is the earliest you can get this. So two of these secure magnetic tape cassettes and one of these flat screwdrivers will get you one of these. And so yeah it's relatively expensive but if you want to get 762 NATO on full auto this is one of your only options. Again with BCP FMJ or M80 this thing is going to slap. Now, next we have the RPDN. This is an extremely fun weapon and I've been using this particular build because, as we pointed out on the Prapple version, this one has a rail where the other one does not, given the N in the name. So what we can do here is we can either use the optic that it comes with, which is the OKP7, or we can just swap over to the Cobra. We can put on whatever sight that we like and we can also add a laser on the side because there aren't any mounting points for anything else. So if you do want to put tactical devices, this is the way to do it. This is also the shorter version, so it is very slightly more ergonomic and you can also add the thread adapter on the front for two extra ergo, not that that probably does anything. 
Either way, this one has been extremely fun. I want to use it a lot more, and there are some things about the weapon that just make it an incredible vibe. It literally only has full auto, you cannot change it to semi, which tells you something about how it's supposed to be used, and it only comes with 100 round magazines. There are no other mags for this weapon. Go and give it a try. It's also 700 RPM as well, which is slightly faster fire rate than all of the other AKs, except the AK-12, and given that this fires 7.62x39, it's a complete bullet hose. I paired this with US, and it worked a treat. The final one on mechanic that is worthwhile is the M1A SAS. These Wilston cigarettes do fluctuate in price, but they're usually fairly cheap, somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 rubles, which means that you can get this thing at around 100k, which honestly, I think is a pretty good deal. This is the starting point for the Meta M1A, or at least it used to be. I don't know whether it will be any more or not, but if you want a relatively good DMR for a cheapish price, this is one of the best ways to do it. It's a little bit cheaper than something like the SR25, for example. Now, he also has this Longboy MPX. This is absolutely hilarious to look at. I don't recommend this because the vertical recoil of 30 is only very slightly better than 34 that you get from the standard MPX and at 95k I'm not really sure if it's worth it but it looks absolutely hilarious. As for ammunition he doesn't really have a lot. There's Luger CCI which is 70 damage and 10 pen so I think you know it, it's okay. You have R37F which is the pure flesh round for the P90 which I've kind of gone off a little bit like yes you could shoot at legs with this and maybe you can get a sneaky chest shot but Aramid's going to absorb a lot of this and so I'm not really that keen. JSP SX is the best cartridge that you can probably buy at level 3 traders for the MP7 and this is unfortunate for it because FM FMJ was basically the main thing going for it. JSP has 46 damage and 32 penetration, which is nowhere near as good as the MP7 used to be with the FMJ cartridge, and so I think this just makes the MP7 fall in line with all the other SMGs at this price point. So finally, now we've got to Mechanic 3, we can also talk about the Workbench Level 3, which is basically gate kept behind Mechanic 3. You have to get to him at least before you can do it, and there are other requirements as well, but that's really the basic minimum. Now I've tried to research as best as I can as to what unlocks come on the Workbench, because I haven't got through all of these quests myself, but I've split them broadly into three categories. The first ones are rounds that you can buy on traders elsewhere. The second one is bullets that you can only make in the Workbench 3, so probably the actual valuable ones. And then there's the last lot, which are quest locked to something quite high level, something more than level 30. So to start with, we have AP 6.3, which we saw before on Peacekeeper 3. We have 45 ACP AP as well. This one is on Peacekeeper 4, but although we don't have access to it yet, we probably will have access to it soon. This makes stockpiling this early by crafting not really worthwhile. Same goes with SS 190. You can craft it here and now, but you can also just wait until Peacekeeper 4 to get it. And with the ammo availability of the P90, something like L191 is probably performing quite similarly to SS190 these days, actually. You can also make Lapur FMJ. This is very niche because it only goes in the AXMC and the Mark 18 Mjolnir, but this is also purchasable on Jaeger 4, so don't bother with this one just yet. Then, in the middle category, we can now make Flechette once we've completed Silent Calibre. This is the big brother of the Piranha cartridge, so if you're a fan of shotguns, then this is where you're going to get it this wipe. 545 BP, which is not purchasable from anywhere because a lot of the 545 cartridges are very restricted these days, with PP and BT the best that you can purchase. You have to complete Gendarmerie District Patrol, which is the third in the series of quests on streets from Prapor, but once you do that, then you can craft this in the hideout. Once you complete the Fertilizers quest from Mechanic, you can then buy 9x19 RIP, which is only purchasable on the flea market at the moment, but then you'll be able to craft it once you've completed this quest. It also unlocks crafting PVP as well, which is the better version of AP 6.3 on the 9mm caliber because it has 39 penetration, which is extremely strong. We also see the introduction of APM. This is the 366 caliber, and I'm not surprised that this got pushed out to the Workbench Level 3 with no purchase on the traders because with the new ammo system, 90 damage and 42 penetration would be absolutely insane. As I've said many times before, this is one of the only cartridges in the game that will kill a player through class 3 armor straight to the chest, and although it won't do that to class 4, the amount of class 4 that we have protecting ourselves these days is much less than it was before. This used to require SP6 to do the craft, but now it only needs SPP, which you can barter at Prapple 3 or buy it at Prapple 4, so it's actually a little bit more accessible than it used to be. AP20 slugs you can now build after completing outcasts, and the Zvedster flashbang you can also build in here for the KS23, which is very useful for the killing PMCs whilst flashed quest. Finally, you can make SMB after completing Tarkov Shooter 8. SMB is insane and extremely powerful and very scary to face against, especially in something like the SVD. So the last block are probably out of scope of this video a little bit, but given that it fits so neatly, we may as well talk about them. Once you reach level 35, you can technically complete Your Car Needs a Service, which is an extremely difficult quest to do where you have to go into Lexos and use Caban's key, which is extremely expensive on the flea market. But once you do all of that stuff, then you can get M855A1 to craft in your Workbench 3. While I was originally excited by this, I do think that the value of M855A1 is a lot less than we thought when we went into this patch, just seeing how easily people die to even stuff like M855. So 56A1 is probably going to be a nice middle ground on Peacekeeper 4, and you won't ever need and you won't ever need to craft this. At level 40, 
you can technically complete the guide and this allows you to unlock APSX for the MP7. 762 BP has been moved from the traders to the workbench this wipe as well, although it's behind the same quest that it used to be, Intimidator. This is at level 45 and needs 40 scav headshots, so the real hurdle here is getting to level 45. We've also seen 300 Blackout AP come back, which is quite nice, and you need to complete the quest The Cleaner. This is another level 45 quest requiring 40 raiders on reserve, and this comes after the guide, so you need to complete the guide first, and then you can come do this one afterwards. 300 AP is very similar to 762 BP, except it doesn't do quite as much damage. And finally, M61, which you can craft in the workbench, apparently, after you complete the quest trophies. This is level 55, and you have to hand in 20 USAC and 20 bear dog tags of players above level 50, which sounds like a pretty insane quest to me, and probably one that I'm not going to be doing, and I guess few of you will be either. But either which way, apparently it's there. So out of all of the ammos and weapons available on the level 3 traders, the ones that I'm most looking forward to using, starting with the lower power calibers and moving up, is the AP 6.3 cartridge and L191. I think the P90 and basically any of the 9mm weapons are going to be really good this wipe, the MP5 SD, the MPX, and the MP9N being some notable versions of them. And the fact that they have 30 pen means that they'll go through all the soft armors of even the bulkiest, heaviest armors in the game like the Zabralo. With the increased head hitbox size and the gaps around the thorax and side plates, I think that these weapons are going to be extremely powerful for this particular wipe. With the regular assault rifle calibers, the Org A3 is the one that interests me the most. It has extremely low recoil, and you can buy M855 from Peacekeeper 3, which just allows you to keep going and supplement with anything you find in raid. On the flip side for 545, Mechanic 3's barter for the AK-74M Zenico is just extremely good value, so you can pair that with all the bullets again that you find in raid, or PS that you can buy from Prepple. In 7.62x39, the RPD is hilarious fun, and you should use it at least once, and I do like using it with US ammo to control the recoil a little bit. Up in 762 NATO, I think both the RSAS and the M1A are going to be quite strong and are relatively decent choices without breaking the bank. And then obviously in 762x54R, it's probably the SVD because you really just don't have any other choice. So with that, as usual, big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.